So, hello. So this is five years of WordCamp Grand Rapids. Did you know that? Magic five. I missed one year so far. It was not on purpose. I just didn't know that WordCamp Grand Rapids was happening that year. I don't know how that happened. I just didn't uh, have any idea that it was going on. And so uh, my name is John James Jacoby, and I have uh, had the pleasure of uh, using WordPress pretty much full time in my career for about 10 years or so. Uh, I've been consulting, building websites, much like most of you, and we heard Chris before, I started building websites for folks, mostly for free, uh, mostly to learn, uh, and spending way too much time, uh, doing way too much work all by myself. And so over the course of 10 years, I have learned how to not do that. Uh, I'm not talking about that exactly today, but we could talk about that at any other time. Uh, and so uh, the suggestion for uh, this talk tonight was originally to be the future of WordPress, uh, which other people do that talk all the time. Matt, mostly, one of the co-founders of WordPress every year at WordCamp US, does a future of WordPress talk. And so that is for Matt to do, I think. And so my twist on the idea is to maybe think a little bit farther and maybe a little bit uh, different directions. We're gonna, we're gonna go sideways a little bit too. And so, uh, raise your hand if you know what video game that this is. Isn't it like one of the best games ever? Yes. yes. So Monument Valley, if you've never played Monument Valley, you should play Monument Valley. I get, I, this is like just a personal endorsement. I'm not getting like uh, a kickback for this or anything. It's very soothing, it's very beautiful. Uh, but I thought it was fitting because the future can be scary. And sometimes you feel very alone. And so for me, I actually really enjoy this game because you are very isolated. It is very alone. Most of my favorite video games are the games where you are sort of alone in the world when you're playing. Monument Valley, Metroid, if anybody knows me from tweeting stuff online, Tomb Raider, uh, games where you're sort of in the world solving puzzles. And it is probably no mistake that when I write code, I sort of prefer to do that alone also, uh, which is part of the reason why I think I was really originally attracted to WordPress is because of the independence of it, uh, the Jolly Roger of it, if you will, where you are enabled and allowed to install it for free, run it for free, write code and learn from everybody else for free if you want to, uh, and take it as far as you are willing to take it. And so uh, I would, had already known how to write PHP, uh, and so it was fun for me uh, to learn WordPress in the super early days, and mostly not really like it all that much. Uh, but uh, the community was so inviting that it made it really easy to contribute a little bit and have everyone go, huh, okay, sure, go on in. And so you do that a little bit at a time, uh, and eventually it became uh, a career. And so. Here's me, oh no, so this is, uh, WordPress is great, is, my, uh, is my, my, my beginning of this. If Benjamin Franklin knew about WordPress, he probably would have said that. And so, if you uh, haven't figured this out yet, I'm definitely uh, a crazy person. Uh, WordPress is a piece of software that nobody pays any money for, uh, that I want to work on all the time. And so how do you do that, right? Like that is one of the first questions for people that are not into WordPress when they say, like, it took me a long time for someone to go that I don't know, that doesn't really know what I do or why I do it, to go, H how do you make money? Uh, how does WordPress make money? How does uh, any of this happen with software that doesn't cost any money? Uh, and really, it is events like this. It is the community that is behind it. It is all of us that help make WordPress a bigger uh, and better thing. And so, uh, this is gonna be a little bit weird. This is kind of a twist on things. But this is sort of the, uh, I'm gonna play a video for you, which I don't normally do. There's no audio, so you don't have to be frightened. But this is a video that I found on the, the internet. We're all, we're all friends here, so I'm gonna do what friends do, and I'm gonna share a funny video with you. Uh, but what I think is interesting about this, has anybody seen this? Do you, does anybody already know what I'm gonna show you? Okay, so Mike knows. Uh, and so, watch this happen. Not that long.
And so here's what I love about this. The lion that fell did exactly what we all do when you trip on something. You go, whoop, I didn't mean to fall. And then you just give up, kind of. <laughs> he, he, he just goes, oh, well, I'm going to fall. He commits to falling. Oh, I, okay. And then, like in the universal language of life, his friend is legitimately concerned about what happened to him. Right? Like, with no words being said, these two creatures are able to communicate with one another concern, worry, safety, without anybody communicating anything with one another. Right? And so I think that this is really an interesting thing because what we do as people is use words to communicate all the time. We use WordPress to blog. We use BB Press to post things in the forums. We use WooCommerce to sell things. We write code with words all the time. But the universal language of all of the things that we do can be done without words. And so in a lot of ways, by using words, we really intentionally have to do the total opposite of what nature has shown us works, no matter what. We completely miscommunicate and over-communicate everything using millions of words all the time. That causes a bunch of miscommunication. It causes a bunch of problems, big companies, small companies, online, on Twitter, people fighting, whatever else. And so the thing with this that I thought uh, really applied to, I mean, WordPress and what we do in this talk and what I'm about to say, uh, is that uh, words are really hard because we invented words, right? I mean, it sounds really stupid to say, but we invented them. We pressed them all day, right? Every day with code, with WordPress, with everything else. Uh, and we could totally get by without any of it. But we are here today because of the impact that it has made or will make uh, on our careers, on our families, on our lives, with each other, and so on and so on and so on. And so we have built up over millions of years, depending on where you are and what you think, uh, how important it is to kind of evolve beyond just the natural communication and instead uh, think a little bit more deeply and philosophically and use your words and your mental capacity uh, to not just use body language but to actually get the thoughts uh, out of your head in a way that everybody else understands. And so it's hard to talk about the future of WordPress or the future of anything without mentioning Gutenberg and this is the first and last time that I'm going to mention it uh, in the next half hour or 45 minutes that I've got. If you do not know what Gutenberg is, you should go find out what Gutenberg is somewhere on the internet, because you cannot uh, step around the stage or the corner without having somebody talk about it. It is the future of WordPress. You need to learn what Gutenberg is and how it works if you plan to have a career in WordPress for the next 10 years. That is my disclaimer at the beginning of all this. It is super important that whatever you do for clients, for plugins, for themes, affiliate marketing, I don't care what you do, Gutenberg is going to own it. And so learn what it is and how it works uh, and be a part of it if you can. That's it. I'm done. So first on my uh, checklist of things that uh, the future of the future of WordPress is growth. And what I mean by that is that everything naturally and lions being the king of the jungle, uh, has a tendency to grow. Everything does. It, it, we perceive that growth is healthy. Uh, things that are bigger are, for whatever reason, perceived to be better. Aaron talked earlier today about longer passwords being better. Uh, every time that you see something that is growing, it is sort of perceived to be good. WordPress itself, growing. The code base, growing. In theory, that's better. Uh, it might not be, but there is an enormous amount of growth that is happening in the WordPress community in every single direction. There are more plugins being released on WordPress.org than there ever have been before. Someone else can find the charts and graphs, but I promise you it's true. Uh, same with themes. More themes are being reviewed more quickly than ever before. More people are writing more and more uh, solutions to things uh, than has ever been happening. Uh, in addition to that, 
there are more companies sort of create, being created every day. More companies are hiring more people. More people are using WordPress. WordPress market share is growing still, 33% and up. And so if that is a number that matters and is important to you, it is to me, uh, then growth is all across the board. Uh, I don't know what it means when growth stops or when that momentum starts to slow down. I think everyone freaks out and says, well, WordPress is dead or whatever they're going to say. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that that's necessarily true. And we've kind of talked about that throughout the day and stuff today. Uh, but with growth will typically come added complexity. It's hard to build more things and have it be simpler. And this is like, as a software developer, I am guilty of this many, many times over, where you think that the solution to something is building a plugin that introduces lots more functionality or code uh, to solve a problem that only exists because there is something that's already there in the first place. Uh, and so every new piece of code, and no offense, but again, including Gutenberg, uh, is going to add an insane amount of complexity to the WordPress that we all know and love. Uh, not just complexity for users, which is the obvious sort of use case here, uh, but for the developers that work on WordPress core, their entire way that they have used and built and maintained WordPress is now 100% different. Up to and including when you pull down the latest version of WordPress, like at, if you work on WordPress, the software, it does not work the same way that it worked two weeks ago because they've rearranged where everything lives and works and all of these things recompile WordPress into the WordPress that gets shipped out to everybody else. And so all of the ways that I have helped build WordPress for the past 10 years are completely gone. I mean, not all of them, but most of them are 100% different than they were two weeks ago because JavaScript and processes and compilers and build processes have taken over all of it. And it's all stuff that needs to happen on servers all over the place when before it used to just be like, done. And so every time with every new release, WordPress is only going to get more complex, which for me in my own sort of personal opinion uh, is a little scary actually, because WordPress has always been known and has a reputation for having a very low barrier to entry and being super easy to use. And so if WordPress stays easy to use, but the barrier to entry keeps getting higher and higher to make WordPress better, uh, it doesn't, doesn't seem like we're doing the right thing all the time. It doesn't seem like we're going the right direction. Uh, but it's hard to make WordPress better or, the, word, or the, 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 the web better without also growing it and making it more complicated at the same time. And so the one thing that complexity brings is solutions. The glass is either half empty or half full, but it's actually both. So someone who says that you're a pessimist or you're an optimist, you're probably both at any given time about any given dumb thing. And so we are pretty fortunate that with the community that we have, the businesses that we have, the contributors that we have, Aaron is here from the security team. Uh, there are other people from all areas of, that work on core or in the community. Uh, there are hundreds of WordCamps around the world every single year. Uh, we are sort of a community of problem solvers that are offering solutions to the problems that come up with every single WordPress release, with every single customer that we have, with every lead that we get, and so on and so on. And so solutions generally come in the form uh, of plugins, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be. Uh, I think when I think of services, most of the time, the things that are, that are solutions, what I think of is services, of which there are like, again, more and more and more coming out on any given month. People are focusing their lens, like Liquid Web is focusing on WooCommerce. Automatic used to be focused pretty heavily on WordPress.com and their like VIP platform, but pivoted a long time ago to focusing pretty much on Jetpack as like their future as an organization. Um, and so uh, the future, at least a, a small chunk of it, a, a small profitable chunk of it, 
really exists in providing services that rotate around WordPress. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with kind of how all the pieces fit, the easiest way uh, or the most recognizable service that kind of rotates around WordPress or that WordPress is a part of is hosting. That's like the obvious one because you don't really get to use WordPress on the web unless it's hosted somewhere for you. Most people are not running up, or spinning up their own droplet, starting up their own Linode, doing all those kind of things. You're mostly relying on a Bluehost, a Dreamhost, a Liquid Web, a Pagely, a Pantheon, or somebody else to get your WordPress website up into the world. But we've had services for a really long time. We've had uh, a kismet comes with WordPress. That is a service that comes inside of your WordPress that you have to turn on. Uh, Gravatar, for what it's worth, is a service that comes built into WordPress to put a face on your stuff. And without that thing, you would have to figure out a way to somehow get your picture on somebody else's blog. Uh, there are all these sort of services that have been around for a long time that you don't really think of as a service uh, because they've sort of been somewhat ubiquitized with being packaged with everybody's WordPresses all over the place. Uh, but the obvious service is Jetpack, but there are less obvious services that are specific or really help WordPress like CDNs like Cloudflare or domain services like name.com or hosts that allow uh, sort of one-click installs of WordPress because that was always a, a really big deal back in the day. Uh, but I think we're going to watch the services space like heavily evolve. Uh, and I think the writing is on the wall a little bit with this. Like I think everyone is sort of openly telling us that this is what they're doing without us really identifying that this is exactly what they're doing, uh, which is really smart for WordPress in a lot of ways, uh, but also really challenging in some ways. And so for example, one of the things that made WordPress really popular originally was uh, being able to import and export your blog data from one platform to the next. And so if you wanted to move off a blog or a movable type or whatever else, export it in or export it out, import it in, everything came over. Like, it was kind of amazing to see everything, just all your images and everything come from one website and into the other. Uh, and that really helped WordPress get a lot of popularity and, uh, and sort of win back in the original days. However, if you want to move your uh, WooCommerce site to easy digital downloads or back and forth, uh, we don't necessarily have that yet. We're not there with being able to make all of these pieces of data super portable. Uh, if you want to move your vBulletin forum to BBPress, we built those importers a long time ago. Those are all in there. There's 20, too many of them. And it works pretty okay. Uh, and for what it's worth, again, uh, even though it's not a ton of installs, BBPress has almost 400,000 installs which for forum software uh, is like the market share. It's not just 33%, it's like 62% of all forums are running BBPress. Uh, but you wouldn't know that because nobody's really paying attention to forums the way they pay attention to WordPress or anything else. And so what you'll see in services in the future of WordPress is web hosts really truly doubling down on owning one very specific piece of that pie. Uh, there are folks very brilliantly focusing on WooCommerce because there is a, a huge install base there. There's an economy there. Uh, there is dependency for other people's businesses to use WooCommerce. So being the person that is the foundation for all these companies is a really smart strategy, I think. Uh, there's no reason why someone couldn't do that for BB Press forums or Buddy Press communities or uh, podcasting sites. I know that folks are sort of working on podcasting, like there's a site somewhere, I don't know the name of it, somebody's working on that. Uh, but you will see people that just own that space on purpose. Their, their whole WordPress installation process will be 100% dashboarded to be a WooCommerce, we're gonna set you up and hook you up and it's gonna be super dope experience uh, because that's where they believe that the future of, of WordPress and things are going to go. Uh, but that is what people are, have sort of been doing for a while. And in the way that history sort of repeats itself, uh, people used to do this with cPanel. Like just white, white label it, make it their own, they'd have their own install. It was just cPanel, but it looked different. You click on different things, but it's kind of the same thing. You're gonna see people doing this just using WordPress as the, as the interface to get a website up and running. 
uh, with their fancy, flashy bits all bolted onto it. And a lot of this is really difficult to do uh, without partnering up. And so at some point, somebody probably smarter than me had said something that I have latched onto that's hard for me to let go of, uh, which is you can do the best work of your life or you can be successful. You can't really do both, right? Like, if you want to be successful, you got to not be alone anymore. You have to partner with other people to be successful. You might like what you're doing, but the best work that you'll ever do in your life will probably be the stuff that you have worked on by yourself in the corner as a hobby that is the, the best, nicest looking thing. But no one's going to really know about it or care because they're not as invested in it as you are. It's hard to take this thing that you did on your own. It's unrealistic to expect for that thing that you built on your own to suddenly just get as popular and get the passion behind it as people have specifically with WordPress, I think. And WordPress, in a way, uh, kind of has that early success syndrome where uh, popularity spiked. And I, I know Doug has seen me show this before, where uh, for in the early days of WordPress and BB Press, when BB Press was a different piece of software, they had the same number of installs. They, you would inst they both were, the graphs were all, the number of people installing WordPress were the same as people installing BB Press. And then movable types switched their license and WordPress skyrocketed and BB Press kind of stayed the same. Uh, and so what you're going to see uh, are people partnering with one another in order to get their idea across the finish line, or at least move the ball a little bit. Because you can't do that by yourself. It takes other people. It takes people behind what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And for partnerships, you will see, like, does anybody have Eero? Does anybody buy Eero routers to have at home? So I, I, got, I, fell, I fell victim to like, the podcast advertising and totally ditched my Apple routers at home and bought Eero's. Uh, but they partnered with 1Password. They partnered with uh, VPN, I forget what, uh, Encrypt.me, and other folks. They just, like, I paid for Eero. I have this physical hardware in my house. But I paid them an extra 100 bucks a year to have 1Password and the VPN service for free. And so they partnered to provide value that I will pay for on an annual basis. And I think that that's really smart. Uh, it's weird that it's a router that's partnering with other people, but I think that that's sort of how we get along with these recommendations and these partnerships to go, okay, well, if you like me, these are my people, and you will like them too, because you trust me, so you can trust them also. And uh, it seems pretty obvious, but sometimes when you're working on stuff or when you're uh, enjoying your independence, it's hard to remember that you need to partner up with people in order to get the things done that you want to get done. And conversely to that, depending on glass half empty or half full, uh, this is going to be, and it has been for a while, but this will continue to be a hugely competitive space. Not because the market is in any way shrinking, but because as everything gets bigger and as sort of people partner up, uh, the, the bigger get bigger and the smaller get smaller. And so, People start competing pretty heavily for WordPress installs, uh, porting insights from one host to another, uh, moving your site from WooCommerce to uh, Freemius or back and forth, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, we are going to see an insane amount of kind of competition from all directions, I think, uh, which I, I think is a healthy thing for WordPress and the community and sites at large and all of it. Uh, but it, it's always sort of been friendly competition because we've always been in part of the WordPress community and in it for the democratizing publishing and open and free web and all those kind of things. But we're also watching the open and free web be taken from us. Uh, and we are sort of watching bigger companies, I mean, for the better, I think, investing more time into WordPress. GoDaddy has full-time employees. Many hosting companies have full-time folks. Consultanting agencies have full-time people working on WordPress. And so there's competition for influence on the software. There's competition for economics on the platform. There's competition between plugins trying to gain users. 
there's all sorts of comp there's competition for uh, independent designers and developers to uh, get attention drawn to them for the cool stuff that they're doing or to get a patch into WordPress core and on and on and on and on and on. And so the more contributors and the more sites and the more people that there are is the more competition that we are going to have, which sort of means you have to be your most awesome best self like all the time, which is not, it's a little tiring, it's a little exhausting, but uh, with some of this, this is a topic that I have talked about in the past. Um, people are going to start deciding that they want WordPress to do something different than what WordPress does. And WordPress.com has sort of always been my best example for doing that and having done that for a very long time and found huge success in doing so. WordPress.com and, and, and folks and I helped work on WordPress.com for a number of years uh, is largely WordPress the way that you all use it and have always known it to be. But uh, it is different in tiny little ways uh, that make it a separate version of WordPress, truly. It lives in a separate repository. It has different little bits and hacks in it or on it. After I left uh, Automatic, those hacks got slowly taken out so that it was easier for everyone to deploy WordPress.com to 4,000 servers all around the world. But it's always been a fork for what it's worth. And so when a company like Pantheon needs to deploy copies of WordPress out into all of their sites, they sort of have a choice to make. Are they pulling it directly from WordPress.org? Or are they pulling it from a fork that they maintain so that they have some control over how their internal deployments work? I don't know for a fact. But my guess is that they're maintaining a fork of it because it is easier and more reliable. They get to handhold it. It's their platform. Their systems team wants to know what it is that's getting run on their own servers. It's the best thing that they can do to keep their things safe. But eventually, that vanilla deployment of WordPress may come with Jetpack by default. And it may come with WooCommerce by default. Uh, as these flavors and forks of WordPress start to come out, you will start to see different versions of WordPress being deployed to people. Uh, and so that's good, and that there is growth, and it is, helps the economy, and uh, it, makes the, it drives solutions, and it makes things better. Uh, and it's scary in that it is not portable yet. People get locked in a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit harder to support and maintain if you want to move someone from one flavor of WordPress to the next. People that have been doing this Everything from switching Ubuntu versions or Linux versions to email addresses from switching a host from one place to the next. Uh, if you have a Gmail account, you're not hosting your Gmail account on Yahoo's servers. Uh, but if you make your own email address, email was designed to be a portable platform, and there are ways to take it and move it from one place to the other. And so WordPress is kind of falling into a similar pattern where uh, it started off as being super portable and really easy to get in and out of, but we're going to, for the sake of growth and trying to solve problems and build solutions, uh, going to start walling these uh, gardens off a little bit on purpose, I think, in order to build better WooCommerce sites, in order to build a better web, in order to get people talking with one another, and so on and so on. And so I'm sort of a, a, an advocate for like healthy forks, I think that it's a good thing for projects to have an alternate direction and voice. Uh, it's also a little weird that WordPress hasn't had a legitimate fork yet, uh, because a lot can get done when you're not encumbered by all of the, the weight of what everyone else is trying to do. Sometimes you need to you know, blitz up the middle, and sometimes you gotta end around. And so to have both, I think, works. Uh, and we've only had one. So to have more than one, I think, is actually really helpful. And so one of the things that I have been deep into for the past six months, but also way in the early days of working on BuddyPress, uh, are, I mean, databases. And this is one of those things that uh, we always sort of knew what the right answer was just because it was right didn't mean it was best. And so around WordPress 3.0 is when custom post types were like formally introduced. 
And you could have made a custom post type at any time before 3.0. You just had to know how. Uh, and the idea with a custom post type is instead of a post or a page, you have whatever you want. You can name it whatever you want, give it its own icon. You are in control of what that thing is. But eventually, th that database table where posts live is not enough for you anymore. And so when we moved BBPress, which is a completely different sort of type of software than what a blog is, Forums are relational heavily. Blogs are less relational. They're top-down, title, content, on to the next thing. Uh, we took BBPress from a standalone piece of software and made it a WordPress plugin that used custom post types and taxonomies. And it was technically not the most efficient for forums, but it helped make BBPress a better piece of software. And so it was the wrong thing to do, technologically speaking, but it was the right thing to do for WordPress.org support forums. It was easier for everyone to understand and work with. Uh, and it helped grow BBPress as a platform and a piece of software for people that wanted forums. And so we took 150,000 BBPress installs that turned into almost 400,000 installs by porting it to being a WordPress plugin that used custom post types. It is less efficient. It is more taxing on a database all throughout. Uh, and in many ways, sites like or plugins like WooCommerce, EDD, and so on, are not super efficient because they use WordPress's core database tables. And so this is sort of a weird WordPress philosophy uh, of don't make your own database tables. It's sort of just use what WordPress gives you because it's convenient and easy. Uh, and that has been what we have preached for a very long time. And I think that for most cases, that is probably true. If you're starting out, that that is the easiest way to ship something, prototype it, proof of concept, it works, it's done, cool. But eventually everyone learns the same lesson, which we learned with BuddyPress in 2008, which is if you actually want this piece of software to scale, you cannot do it that way. If your goal is to do 2,000 card entries a minute on a WooCommerce site, you suddenly go, oh, well, this, is, this will not work, period. End of story. In order to do this over here, we have to offload a bunch of stuff over here in this other solution that we built ourselves. Custom database tables, schema, queries, offload it over here. We'll push it back over here when we're done. But for now, we need to do something else. And so the weird thing about WordPress, and I love it for what it is, is this aversion to custom database tables has really stymied a lot of growth for a very long time. Because lots of the stuff that you would want to do with WordPress, you just cannot do uh, the way that you would want to do it. You want to do recurring dates on a calendar? You will not store that in post meta because you will never be able to fill a calendar with start times and end times from month to month and query it in a way that doesn't break a server down whenever you have more than 1,000 events in it. It just will not work. Um, we see that with BBPress for what it is, which is not even really that, that taxing of a, an application uh, because it uses a lot of metadata. And we query things in weird ways because we are stuck in that database schema. And so plugins more and more are going to go, you know what? We have a million users, and their sites are suffering because of the way that we built this thing, and it's time to move on. Not to move on outside of WordPress, but to own it in a way uh, where they can make it scale, make it fast, uh, and, and make it work in a way that their users ex expect for it to. And so the rest of the world does not care how many database tables that you have on a server. Even if you installed vBulletin 15 years ago, vBulletin had like 100 database tables for the dumbest things ever. But because they, it doesn't matter. If you install, if you have an iPad and you install iBooks and you download a book, Doug and I were just talking about this today, you install a book in the iBooks app, which will eventually be renamed Books, which I guess, whatever. But that book is just a database. It has its own tables for managing your notes and how you tag stuff and highlighting and liner notes and whatever else. If iBooks or if any app wasn't able to make its own database tables to store the stuff it was trying to do, they would never be able to accomplish any of the things that they're doing. 
You wouldn't get to space in a rocket without being able to have a couple of database tables that you needed to make on your own. Uh, if you had to shove them all on this same one old thing, you would never be able to get anywhere. And so you're going to see uh, added complexity in terms of plugins adding and using their own database tables to get the job done. Uh, which means you have to relearn a little bit about how they work. It means you have to dig a little bit deeper in order to understand how they've chosen to do these things. But we're going to see this happen. We're going to have to. There's going to be impossible to get any bigger or faster or better uh, without it. And in order to do that, and I almost wrote serverless on here because I know that like that's supposed to be a thing, but it's not really a thing because uh, you, you have to have servers in order to get anything done. I think it's a dumb word. But uh, you're going to see servers doing what servers are supposed to do, which is process information without you knowing or caring that they're doing it. Jetpack is already doing this in really unique and kind of clever ways with like what Chris talked about with Photon, uh, with Jetpack comments and likes and all these things. Uh, even vault press and backups. Servers should do what servers are supposed to do. Uh, we talk about servers like your web host and your web server doing its thing, uh, but we're going to see services and solutions that are going to be using many web servers for multiple things for many different reasons. And so in the original way that WordPress sort of supported all of these servers was horizontal database scaling. You have a bunch of databases or you clone your database all across all these separate servers so that reading the database is super fast and writing to the database is super fast. Uh, and WordPress sort of supports that internally by default. But it doesn't really know how to do that for comments or for forums or for your BuddyPress install, your WooCommerce site, or so on. And so we're going to see WordPress just sort of uh, behind the scenes using many more computers and machines uh, in order to get the things done that need to get done. Crunching images, serving downloads from a WooCommerce site, uh, handling in-person fulfillment from stuff that you sell through a WooCommerce store. You're going to offload all of that to some other server to get the job done, the same way that you do that with payment gateways and everything else. Here, we're going to have to say, if we have a super active site, someone else handles our caching. Someone else handles our databases. Someone else is going to handle our comments. Uh, and so on. They might come back into your WordPress install for you to see it and manage it and moderate it, but it's just going to get bigger and span across multiple servers. That will be more and more common as the years go on. And with all of these things, uh, we will see more companies acquire other companies. This has happened a few different times with a few kind of big deal companies in the WordPress space uh, that uh, either their investment, their original investment is up and, uh, or their original investors want out or someone's unhappy with something or someone's super happy with somebody else that they've met and they want to figure out a deal. However those things work, uh, this I think, in my opinion, is sort of the sign of a healthy, growing WordPress economy. Every other company that you see on the news, for good and for bad, uh, eventually acquires a company that sort of fits the thing that they're not doing very well. Uh, sometimes it's things where you're like, oh, I really wish that AT&T and Spectrum weren't going to do their thing. Sometimes you're really excited that two companies partner up or somebody buys something. Apple bought, uh, there was like a app company that did uh, weird automation like uh, workflow stuff and uh, beautiful UI and uh, Apple bought them and they're rolling that into the next version of iOS for Siri commands and stuff. And so sometimes you're like, oh, well, that makes total sense. This was beautiful and it totally fits. Uh, but we'll see more and more of these things. The fact that Microsoft just bought GitHub like blew my mind because GitHub was like a company that I didn't think was a purchasable company. Like if someone, was, if, if, if it, it was like somebody buying Microsoft, they'd be like, no way did that happen. And then, sure enough, Microsoft bought GitHub, and I was like, wow, that is a big, big deal. Uh, and so we'll see more of that happening in the WordPress space. And so companies will continue to, uh, and, you know, for healthy, uh, absorb and support other companies. Uh, iThemes was the one that kind of is big on my mind that kind of helps draw attention to this. Uh, and Studio Press with the Genesis uh, theme. Uh, they've been a, a smaller, uh, separate part of 
a copy blogger for a while, working on Genesis specifically, and now they have uh, support through WP Engine to continue to grow Genesis as its separate thing. Uh, this is good, I think. These people move the, move the pieces around a little bit and sort of make sure that things that have huge install bases. Genesis, I think, has 600,000 installs for a theme. It's like an insane number for one very specific theme. And so to ha know that they've been able to pull this off with a team of like five developers, uh, and now they're going to pump more energy into making Genesis a, a bigger and better part of WP Engine's suite of offerings, is really, really nice, I think. It's really good for everybody. And with that, then, something that we haven't really seen happen yet, but will eventually happen, is an actual merger. An, acquire, an acquisition, I feel like, is a little different. Chris will correct me. But an acquisition is mostly just a talent. We're taking talent and product and going. A merger is like AT&T and Spectrum, where there's big pieces that go, okay, well, we're both so big. The gravitational pull of both of us, we can't help but bounce into one another. And so eventually, you think, okay, we're going we're gonna to figure something out. And so that might be, uh, so it could be something crazy that you would never think of on a left field. It could be GoDaddy and somebody else. It could be Automatic and somebody else where you're like, oh, I, why? And then you look at it and you go, this makes total sense. We haven't seen big company mergers in the WordPress space yet, uh, but I think all of these big companies are realizing how big they are now. Like WP Engine started with a few guys. Automatic started with Matt and Donica and Ryan Boren was three people. And so it's 760 employees now. Uh, and so these companies are growing. It is getting bigger. Uh, and we will see these companies that have a huge amount of investment in WordPress continue to merge uh, or start uh, to merge. Uh, and I, this is based on, I don't know anything, so don't look at me like I actually know something. But it just seems like this is the natural progression of things in any space. Uh, they, just, they just happen this way. And so I think we can predict that these things are going, to, uh, uh, are going to happen. And what that means is lots of money, like big dollar deals uh, that, I mean, I've worked on some decent sized WordPress sites, but these we're talking like big money deals are going to happen, which means companies that are already and have been sponsoring WordCamps for a really long time have also been sort of pumping a lot of money into WordCamps and sponsorships for folks uh, big and small. Uh, I was really lucky for a couple of years to have hosting companies sponsor me to work on WordPress core and security. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough to get by. And so uh, you'll see more the economics of all of this uh, explode, I think, in lots of different directions. Not just the small stuff, like selling Gutenberg themes and blocks, like small shops and independent folks might make decent money doing that. There are people on Theme Forest that make a surprisingly decent living selling, you know, relatively popular, but in my opinion, probably not super high quality stuff. Uh, but, uh, but it's okay. It's, I'm not, it's, the point is that we're seeing more and more uh, available funding for the projects and the things that people are interested or passionate about. Uh, and that's important for an open source project. I mean, for a long time, people look at WordPress as being uh, automatic. But the reality is that automatic has stepped back pretty far to let other companies influence the direction that WordPress as a piece of software could or should go. Uh, and that, again, is sort of good or bad, I guess, depending on which side of the lion pond that you're falling into or not. Uh, because the, uh, if you are, um, I lost my train of thought. I had a thought, and that's gone. I don't know where I was going with it. But my point is, in general, we're going to see lots of uh, economic stimulation in the, in the WordPress space. I really wish I knew where I was going, but I lost it. So Aaron talked a little bit about this on the security side of things. Um, but we see this uh, every day with your access logs. You see this with uh, 
WordPress security stuff. We see it on the news all over the place. Um, but we are going to run into folks uh, that are bad actors. Uh, and by that, they're sort of not, not good folks, I guess. Um, and the general, my general, if I'm allowed to have one, concern, uh, well, since we're talking about companies and influence and money with WordPress as a piece of software, and it means a lot to me uh, because it sort of aligns with my personal beliefs of freedom and democratizing publishing, empowering people to publish to the web, have a voice, uh, make an, a living, build the software the way they want to uh, for free or no money so that anyone of any economic uh, background or uh, anything is able to start from sort of the same place. Uh, those are things that are important to me. Uh, but in an open community that kind of is inviting and, uh, and uh, really open arms to anyone, uh, it's possible that eventually we may run into somebody who doesn't have the same or best interest in part for the community uh, or the software uh, or anything else. And so we are pretty lucky, I think, to have not really encountered that yet. But that doesn't mean that uh, someone from an organization or a company that is sponsoring WordCamps or is going deep into it doesn't feel like they have influence over the software to take it into a, a, a different direction. We've been pretty good for the past 15 years of WordPress where we've built something really great. We have a great community. We have a great piece of software. Uh, and we're pretty good, I think, about uh, sort of course correcting and self-policing if uh, someone violates a code of conduct, if somebody's uncomfortable, those kind of things. Uh, but if someone comes in uh, that has more money or influence or power over something else, we may not know for a while. We haven't had that happen, I don't think. But it is one of those scary things that could happen in our, uh, in our future. And since I'm close to running out of time, uh, and generally try to leave some time for Q&A because I talk very deep and philosophical about lots of different things. Uh, given uh, the weekend that it is, uh, WordPress, hopefully, forever, will maintain its independence. The nice thing about WordPress is that it is WordPress, and it is ours to be whatever we want for it to be. Uh, we get to patch bugs, we get to build features, we get to decide the direction that we want to take the web and WordPress sites. And a long time ago, it was, let's let comments happen. Let's let people make comments on blog posts. That seems cool. And then it was, let's let people categorize their blog posts. That seems cool. Let's let people build plugins and themes and turn this into something bigger and give a little bit more control to people to make their WordPress sites however they want. Uh, and so on and on, we've built the things that we all together think that WordPress or the web or the, the tool that we use to build websites with uh, should be. And uh, personally, I really enjoy that freedom and independence uh, to let us build uh, the web that we want, uh, that all of us want, uh, instead of the web that Weebly wants us to have or somebody else. We're able to sort of build it the way that we want it to be. Um, and so, with that, I will have two minutes left, and I will say thank you for having me. Uh, and if there are questions, I would love to, uh, to answer any questions that anybody has. Anything at all. No wrong questions. Joe has a question. What? Oh, yeah, Maha, yeah, yes. No. Don't. If you use your laptop or your machine for actual work and you do not plan on helping Apple make Mojave, do not install Mac OS Mojave. Don't do it. iOS 12 is okay. The beta there is so far pretty good. Do not install Mojave, though. It broke VirtualBox, so just nothing works. A bunch of texts are broken, and so like a homebrew doesn't work. You have to, it's not good. Don't do it. And if you install Xcode, that's broken, and it won't install the command line tools correctly. It's don't do it. Stay away from Mojave. I like that. That was like your own. I should start an Apple blog myself, right? Like, why haven't I done that yet? 
Uh, in the middle, I'm sorry, go ahead. So for WordPress.tv, the question is, what is the future of WordCamps? And it's interesting having watched WordCamps evolve to what they are, because uh, the, the nice thing about them originally was that they were always really small and intimate. And those are my favorite camps. That's why I enjoy coming to Grand Rapids, is because 150 people seems to me like the sweet spot for a WordCamp. Whereas WordCamp Europe is 2,200 people. And so you see some people and you're like totally overwhelmed with everything that's happening and then you come and then you go and you're like, I don't know what just happened. Um, and then uh, you know, as an experiment, uh, I, a couple of years ago, did a WordCamp in little old East Troy, Wisconsin. And uh, we had 35 people. And so what's nice about WordCamp still is that we're able to experiment. Like this is, I mean, my favorite, but like being plug-in and tool sort of specific, like there's WordCamp for Publishers is happening in Chicago in August. This is a different kind of event for a different audience. And so we're big enough now where I think there is some value in finding your people within your people. Like I'm into publishers or I'm into big media or I'm into forums or I'm into plugins or whatever I'm into. And we're lucky to have that growth where we can on purpose discriminate who we want to be with at that period of time. Uh, and that's healthy, again, I think let's, let's, all of these things that we're talking about is the future of WordCamps, I think. Uh, but the other side of it, and we see this again with uh, events like this one, and definitely at WordCamp East Troy, uh, is there was so much sponsorship money from global WordCamp sponsors that the local contributions and tickets, like they were a fraction of the overall budget for any of it. Uh, and so it's the, the amount of support that we have is really impressive, but a lot of that support isn't as localized as it used to be. Uh, a lot of it is Microsoft and you know, you're getting like big uh, sort of gold level type sponsors. And so I think the future is all of those things, uh, but we get to decide, uh, which I think is nice. So it's probably a non-answer, but that's my best answer. I have zero minutes left, so I guess if someone else has a question, I'll just fit one in, because if anything, I'm known for like delaying everything and going way over budget and time. So <laughs> does anybody else have anything? OK, nothing. So thank you again. Have a good night. Enjoy the after party. And uh, congratulations on five years. Woo, five years, yay. Good night.